Hi friends, Kim from Stamping Imperfection. I'm here with Scrapbook Pal today, and I'm sharing some great stuff from Hero Arts. I'm playing with the Impressionist Water Lilies Heroscape stamp set. This is a layering stamp set. There are four layers to this little background scene. You can see there are some extra little stamps in here to help fill in your scene. If you want to add more stuff to your scene, there's a little frog. There's a bridge, there's a flamingo, lots of great sentiments here. So this is a really fun one. There is a coordinating die set for the flamingo, the bridge, and the frog. I actually pulled out some other things here too while I was browsing on Scrapbook Pal. I found this beautiful swirling tide border. This is a fancy die with frame. I found the inverse bubbles bold print background stamp which I loved and then I have this friend words fancy die set it's got a hello and a thanks that I really like in there and I thought those would coordinate well with the sentiments in the stamp set I pulled out my favorite pearl embellishments from pink fresh I've got the um, peach fuzz silver matte and my favorite sparkling champagne I decided that I would treat myself to a new black black ink pad. This is from Honeybee Stamps. It's their intense black alcohol marker friendly stamp set and on the back it tells me that it is a raised felt pad. It works on a variety of surfaces after heat setting. It's acid free, archival, and fade resistant. So if you like to stamp on your scrapbook pages that's a great ink to use for it. So I tested some of my little um, Catherine Pooler minis just to see how the colors work together so I could decide what I wanted to use. I pulled out the largest of the layering pieces here, the layering stamps, and I'm stamping this with the lightest blue I've picked out. This is the All That Jazz ink. I love this color. I thought this was a perfect color. I used this one on every one of the cards I made with this little background scene. I do have six cards to share at the end of this video and I'll show you a couple of them, um, the, the process that I used in a couple of them, including this one. And um, this is the eucalyptus ink. So that second layer actually created the details on the lily pads. This third layer was adding more to the water background. I decided I wanted to try a second blue shade here. So I tried um, Daydream. And I actually really liked this. I thought the daydream was really pretty. Um, and then for the final layer, I pulled out the lily pad stamp and used the lime Ricky. And this should be the lighter of the two greens for the big back part of the lily pads. And on the next few of these that I did, I actually used this stamp as my second layer. I thought it was easier to put that lily pad background in and I did use some do, -si do ink to add the flamingo and some Mardi Gras to add the frog. I loved the do, -si do ink on the flamingo. I was kind of neutral about that Mardi Gras color for the frog. I didn't think it worked well with the other colors I used. I also stamped one of the sentiments and basically made a single layer card here with all of the goodies that I used from the stamp set. And I'm using that new intense black ink from honeybee stamps here and it worked beautifully and it's always fun to get a new ink pad even if it's not something super colorful this is a second color combination and i used the um all that jazz and the suede shoes ink color for that then i did some stamping with the um, flamingo the bridge and the frog and I did a couple different combinations so for this particular one I used the do, -si do for the flamingo I used the icing on the cake brown for the bridge and then I used I think I used sage green and icing on the cake for the frog and then I might have even added a little eucalyptus like I stamped all three of them and um, I just was trying to get a more realistic looking frog color. So I just was experimenting. And I think that was part of the fun that I had today was because I made a whole bunch of those little scene backgrounds with different colors. I even tried 
um, on the back of the packaging they made some suggestions and one was to use instead of two different shades of blue for the water part of the background they used a blue and then a a lavender color so I did that for one of my cards and I used the serenade ink color from Catherine Pooler's minis so I went ahead and die cut those out I also did those three pieces and heat embossed them in gold I love a metallic detail on my cards on almost every card I make I try to add something metallic so I I did a heat set I did heat set those in um, gold and die cut those out as well. So I put those aside and I'm working on, now I wanna make um, something with that big, bold, um, inverse bubble background stamp and the swirling tide border die with the frame because I love adding frames to my pieces and I really love the fancy ones. And I think this tide border, die is actually going to be really pretty with this little scene so I thought I would try that so I decided that I wanted to instead of just um, doing it in one color like die cutting it in one color I decided I would make my own background so I pulled out some of my distress oxides this is peacock feathers and I'm using the honeybee stamps blending brushes I quite like these brushes and you can see I've I've used these on other things before and I just wipe off any excess ink on my microfiber cloth and then I go ahead and use them and I don't have any issues. I do wash my brushes. Every few times I use them I soak them in my utility sink with a little Dawn dish soap and then I rinse them out really well and I, I stand them up in a jar and let them air dry overnight and that works beautifully. Um, I've had my brushes for a really long time and that has been working well for me. Um, so now I've combined Mermaid Lagoon and Peacock Feathers and you can see I just keep going back and forth between the colors until I get the blend that I like and I use the same the same blender brush that I was using for the Peacock Feathers. I pulled out the salty ocean with and used with that same brush I always feel like I'm blending them together um, it isn't gonna hurt anything if I just use that same brush to blend to the next color too and I'll just go back and forth until I get the color that I or the blend that I really like and um, these distress oxides are just so beautiful for blending and I love the um, the oxide feel to them. They, it almost feels like chalk or it looks it has a chalky look and I've always just loved that look. The first time I used these I just fell in love with them and I'm so happy that I have um, a nice little collection of different oxide colors and if you're if you're new to oxide colors and you're not sure where to get started I love these blues and blue greens and green colors. They're just beautiful. I use them for all kinds of things. So I wanted to experiment a little bit here. I thought I would try this an ink lifting technique here. So I used some temporary adhesive on the back of my piece and then I took and just spritzed this um, background stamp and I'm not sure why I blotted it off. I guess I thought those drips were too big, but then I went ahead and just spritzed it again. So I wanted to see what this looked like. See how this would work. And it actually was okay. But I got a little too much water on there. Like a little less water would be good. I really wanted to see the pattern a bit more. And I decided I'll just stick this back down. I'll wipe up the water. And I'm going to pick one of the colors and here I picked evergreen bow and just inked up my stamp really well with this I don't usually um, use the oxides to ink up a stamp but I did this time and I really like the way this came out I think it looks really textured and I love this look so I'm just making sure I covered that whole piece of paper and you can see there was even still a little bit of water there. 
And a little water cleans these up right away, just like it did with the Catherine Pooler inks when I was on using my, um, doing the ink blending on my craft mat. I just spritzed it with water and cleaned it right up. You don't need any special cleaning solutions to use these dye inks or the oxide inks. So I really like the way that came out. I was trying to let this dry by itself and um, now I'm just going to, I'm going to die cut. And I'm not too worried if like the middle is kind of like spotty. I'm okay with that. It actually looks really good when I'm done and I'm not using the middle anyway. I'm creating a frame. So I did go ahead and run this through my die cutting machine and I'm using the Spellbinders tape here. This is my favorite um, tape to use for anchoring my projects or, you know, holding the dies down. And isn't that pretty? And I try to like just using, uh, I think that's actually the evergreen bow color all by itself. And I actually really liked with the blue in there. So I'm putting this down and I'm feeling like it still needs a little something. I tried the bridge below with the flamingo behind it, but the bridge really is, the curve of the bridge really looks better when you put the bridge toward the top. At least I thought it did. And the scale of the bridge and the flamingo looks better when the bridge is at the top of your scene and the flamingo is at the bottom. So to add something a little extra, I pulled out that Dosey Doe ink. This is one of my picket fence brushes. And I'm just adding a little color around the edges. And you can see that I'm not trying to make a perfect blend like I did with the oxides when I was doing the background. Instead, I like it a little bit uh, blotchy when I do this technique. And notice that I'm not going all the way to that little scene that I stamped with those layered stamps. And in this one, I believe the colors I used on this one were All That Jazz, Juniper Mist, Lime Ricky, and Eucalyptus. So I put that on and I really like that. It feels almost like um, a storybook uh, color scheme. So I like it. And the, I think it's interesting to compare the the do, -si do color on the flamingo when I stamped it to when I ink blended it. I actually really like the way that it looked. Um, it almost looks completely different at ink blended versus um, adding it stamping it and I I know that I stamped it more than one time on the uh, flamingo as well so that was stamped a couple a couple of times which does make the ink a little bit darker so I'm using these 1 8 inch um, foam strips here they fit really well a quarter of an inch uh, was a little bit too much for uh, one of the sides which seemed a little bit narrower I'm also going to use those same strips on the extra pieces that I did. And for this one, I decided, I think I decided not to. Nope, I did add the frog to this one. And then I'll just build my card once I get all my foam pieces on. I do love a good flamingo in a little scene like this. And the only time I've ever seen flamingos is at the Bronx Zoo. And they were actually under a bridge that looked like uh, a very marshy area, just like this little scene looks. So I think that's pretty fun. So I'll just remove the backing and add this on top. Now my the card piece I'm using is four and a quarter by five and a half. So this frame, now I did not snip the rectangular frame off the, I left that attached to the um, swirling tied border. So I left it all as one piece and it really um, made a nice A2 size frame. So I did put the bridge toward the top. I think it looks better there. And I did tuck my flamingo under the frame. There are some really pretty uh, like frame dies that you can buy 
there are trees and branches and things you can do that would look beautiful with this scene. To finish off these cards, I did add some of those sparkling champagne pearls. Love, love, love these little pearls. And here are the cards that I made. So here's the one you just saw me create. And I love the texture that I got on that frame. Here you saw this one at the beginning. That's the single layer card. Here's another single layer card and I used black. I did this the flamingo in silhouette. Here I did the flamingo and the bridge and the sentiment in heat embossed gold. Then I did just the flamingo with the sentiment and some foiling. And here I used my clear blocks for a fun background. So if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching friends.